Hi there. Welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number four for chapter eight. The topic is Fourier series. In this video, we'll look at examples of computing the Fourier series, in particular, calculating the Fourier coefficients. Before we start, and let's um, review the formulas um, that we have derived a couple of videos ago. So this part here is for a function fx periodic with period 2L. So the L is present in the formula. And then you are finding a series of cosine and sine function of m pi x over L. And then in the special case where L equals pi, that is the period is 2 pi, and then you see that pi over L equals 1, and the formula is a bit simpler. Now let's consider a function f of x is given as follows. On the interval from negative 2 to negative 1, it's 0. And from negative 1 to 1 is k for some constant k. And then from 1 to 2, it's 0 again. And it's specified that the period is 4. So here, from negative 2 and 2, it, that's given a complete period, the behavior of the function over that. We can um, quickly sketch this function, and it will be very easy to do. Um, this is x, let's quickly sketch it. And this is f. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have 1 here, and 2 here, and negative 1 here, and negative 2. Uh, let's um, draw the function in color red. So the function is defined from negative 2 to 2 and its periodic offset. So from negative 2 to negative 1 is 0. And from negative 1 to 1, let's say this is the value k is positive. It can be negative as well. Then it just goes down. Okay. And then from 1 to 2, it's 0. So it has a jump here and it has a jump here. So um, now, um, last example, we had a, an odd function. And here we see that this is an even function because look at the graph of this function. It's symmetric about the y-axis. Okay, So um, remember when we had um, odd function, we have only signs in the Fourier series. And here we have even function. What do you guess would happen? Okay, so um, let's compute using the formula. First, we see that the period is 4, so 2L is 4, and L is 2. And we can just compute the Fourier coefficient by the Euler Fourier formulas. And let's first compute A0. It's always wise to compute A0, even though it the formula is the same um, for all a n's, and this is just by putting n equal 0. But very often, it's very useful to just compute this one by itself. OK, so the formula is 1 over l, which is 2, from negative 2 to 2 of 1 times f dx. Now let's plug in the function f. And we know that on that interval, f is non-zero only from negative 1 to 1, and the 0 outside. So we can only integrate um, from negative 1 to 1. That's the only interval that's non-zero. And on the interval, it's capital K. And uh, the integral of a constant over an interval, if you look at the, the, the graph under the function, it's just a rectangle. So it will be the length times the width, which will be 2 times k. OK, so put that in. We have half times 2k. Half cancels the 2, and we get capital K. OK, now let's compute um, a n for n bigger than or equal to 1. So first, that's the formula. And then we recognize that this is non-zero only from negative 1 to 1, and therefore we only integrate from negative 1 to 1, and this function is a constant k, which we can take outside the integration sign. So we need to integrate a cosine function. 
Okay, let's work out the detail. So the integral of cosine is sine function, and then you have to flip the coefficient here. You get 2 over m pi, and the sine function is evaluated from negative 1 to positive 1. So um, we see that if we put the upper limit 1 here, we get sine m pi over 2 minus the lower limit x is negative 1, you get a negative sign inside the sign, which you can move out, and then it becomes plus the same thing again. So it's just this term times 2, and then the 2 cancels the 2, and, and cancels the half here, 2 down here, and then we'll just get 2k over m pi, sine of m pi over 2. Okay, so we see that we need to find out the value of sine m pi over 2 for n starting from 0, well, actually 1, 2, 3, and 4, okay? And um, it probably is most efficiently done um, by drawing a unit circle. So let's try that. We draw a unit circle and look at, um, and this will be the, the, this will be the angle theta and the sine value. Okay, so the, if at theta is 0, sine here is 0. If it becomes pi, and sine is 0. If it's half pi, sine is 1. And if it's down here, that's um, and 3 pi over 2, and it is negative 1. So we see that um, if now n shall be an even number, then you would be either here or here. Okay, so let's let's point. So in this point would be n will equal to zero, and then n can be four because then you get two pi, you come back, and then eight, and then twelve, and then you increase by four, and so on and so forth. Okay, and then for on this point, and you see that n starting from two, and then it will be six, and it will be ten, and then so on and so forth. Okay. And then over here, this point here, you will have n. It's, um, and if n is 1, that's half pi. And then you add a 2 pi on it, meaning you add 4, so you get 5. And then you add 4, you get 9 and 13, and so on. And then at this point, um, you will have n equal 3. And then add a 2 pi on it, then means add a 4 on it, you get 7, and then add another, and add another, and so on. So um, summarizing this, you see that if n is an even number, um, then this is 0. And when n is odd, um, there are two cases. One is uh, you start from 1 and then add 4 on it, skip 4. In that case, you get 1 because you end up here. Finally, um, the last case would be um, down here. Then n will be 3, and then you skip by 4. So 7, 11, 15, 19. Okay, now putting this back, um, we'll have our a n's. a n's will be 0 when n is even. And then in this case, and the sign takes value 1, then you just get 2k over m pi. And in the last case, and the sign gives you negative 1, and so you get negative 2k over m pi for these values of n. Okay, um, now let's compute the b n's. And we can actually completely skip the computation by the following observation. We note that the function f is an even function, and the function sine m pi x over 2 is an odd function. Then the product is an odd function. And then integrating over a whole period symmetric about the origin of an odd function would give 0. Therefore, we have b ends with this integral, and as long as f is an even function, this is going to give us 0. Okay, so um, when b ends are 0, that means uh, in the Fourier series we have no sine functions. The only um, functions there will be the cosine functions and the constant. 
we are now ready to write out the Fourier series for the function f, um, which will only contain cosine function and the constant term. Of this, where the a0 and the a ends, we have computed. Okay, so we can um, write out the first few terms of uh, this. So um, the constant term gives us k over 2. And for all these terms in the an, we know that 2k over pi is a common factor, and we take out. After we take that out, we simply have n um, pi x over 2 in cosine and um, with a different n number. So and um, here will be n is 1, and that's n is 3, and this is n is 5, and this is n is 7. And you see that the signs are alternating, positive, negative, positive, negative, as we have seen in the previous um, discussion. Okay, so we're going to do a similar thing, that is, um, we'll look at the partial sums. Okay, so um, taking one term, we get just a constant term, that's my y1. And taking two terms, that means a constant term plus the first term here. And then taking three terms, meaning we have an additional term added up here. And then y4 will be adding one more term. And then y5 will be adding another term. You can write as many as you like. Okay, so let's take a look at these uh, partial sums and to see how they approximate the um, initial piecewise constant function. Okay, so we set the constant k equals 1. It can be any number, it doesn't really matter. So put it to be 1, now we can plot it. So y1, we see that is a constant term, which is half. So it here is plotted in brown here, and the function f is this blue one. And we see that this constant value is exactly the average of um, this function here on the interval, over the interval from negative 2 to positive 2. Yeah, and this is a, a, a very rough approximation to the function. And now picking up one more term, look at y2, and uh, we see that the function is like this. Mm -hmm. And then the y2 is uh, a constant plus a cosine function. So we have a cosine function here. And you see the function try to approximate this piecewise constant one by staying under and then and staying above and staying under and above around that as best as it can do. Okay, let's add one more term and then look at the partial sum y3. And one sees that um, it's a, a little bit better and it's trying to go around oscillate around this constant function a couple of times to try to make this um, a steep slope to approximate the discontinuity. Okay, and we see that trend continues. For um, y4, we have it steeper here, the brown ones, and then we have one more oscillation because you pick up another um, frequency, a higher frequency here. Finally, um, let's just look at y5, and we see that it's very similar. Here it gets even steeper and steeper, and here there is one more oscillation. Okay, And down here is uh, totally similar to what happens up here. Okay, so finally, um, this is a, um, a plot where we put everything together. So the exact function is this black one. Okay, and then the um, y1 is the constant, which is red here, and y2 is the blue one, which is just uh, one cosine, and y3 is the green one, and you see it oscillates once one more, and then y4 um, is the, the red um, dotted one, is this one, okay, and the y5 is blue with dotted, which is this one. And you can see this um, um, near this discontinuity point where the function f has a jump. And when you pick more terms and you see that the Fourier series partial sum gets steeper and steeper. 
Okay, so we do see that um, with more terms, in, um, the partial sum looks like to be a better approximation to the original function. Well, but it's observation, so um, later on we'll talk a little bit theoretically about that convergence. Okay, so after these two examples, uh, let's make some observation and generalization. We see that if the f is an odd function, then there is no cosine function in the Fourier series. This means there are only sine functions, which we remember sine functions are all, uh, also odd functions. So you can um, form a series for an odd function using odd functions, which kind of makes sense. And then if f is an even function, then there are no sine functions in the Fourier series meaning that in the series we'll have only cosine functions and also the constant term. Okay? And we know that cosine functions, they are even functions. So to um, approximate an even function, we need to use all even functions. Okay, so um, actually these are um, rather general rules um, than just an observation for one example. So um, we will base on this observation later to form some special Fourier series for even and odd functions. Okay, so um, that's all for this video. And uh, next time we'll take a look at um, how to more efficiently um, perform the integrals to find the Fourier coefficients. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.